Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here in the start of a new campaign in Equestria War, which we're playing as Ch uh, the nation of Chiraptera, which I've already done the two minutes to midnight. For countless generations, we've prepared to go to war for the glory of the nightmare, and now the hour of destiny is nearly upon us. It's time to reorganize our forces so that when our goddess returns, we will be ready. Oh, intensified laborer acquisitions. Ooh. Operation Moonshine. Draw the legions. This is one first. As servants of the night, we work best in the shadows. If our plan to free the nightmare from the false goddess Luna is to work, then we'll need to ensure that our existence is keeps kept secret by any means necessary. But the thousand-year conspiracy, millennia. We waited and prepared for a millennia when our goddess returned. Our exile generations on Zebraca mattered little, for she would have a righteous army when she returned, as the prophecy promised. And on top of that, night of nights, one thousand years after the great catastrophe, the elements of harmony tore her asunder. The accursed charms ripped divinity from her holy hooves and devolved her to a lesser form. She returned, though, and that mere moon had returned. Her moral form may be weakened in Princess Luna, but it was a sign, despite her weakened state, cheer up Terra, rejoiced for months at her rebirth, there was hope. For seven years we have intensified our efforts and expanded our operations on Equus. We have strained already soured relations between Thestrals and Ponies, sabotaged efforts to modernize the Equestrian military even after the changing heretics captured Candelot and have embedded our assets across the Equestrian territories. Our ancestors arrived on Zebraca with spears and bows on rickety uh, Chiramais, bursting from the seam with their families. Our exile here, our removal from our homeland will be avenged. We will return to Equestrian and massive ships armed with tanks and machine guns, each blessed by the moon herself. And if we fail, we shall wait a millennium more. We're patient, we are watching, we will return. Soon the Empress shall return. Uh, drill the legions, infiltrate the cities, poison the southeast. Uh, upon the start of the questions of war. Interesting. Poison the southeast. See the following forms. Opium epidemic. Ooh. Had some free state, celestial state, and Baltimore Republic. I'm going to go with infiltrate the cities, but that doesn't really matter too much right now, because right now we have the invisible state. We have the Native Affairs Commission. While the spirit is active, we'll be able to raid our neighbors for laborers, which can be used for various projects. Ooh. All who's on deck. That's not bad. Not great, but not bad. We'll be removed upon the end of the Equestrian Civil War, upon Equestrian removing the Forgotten Tribe National Spirit peacefully. So right now, we have the Legionary Council. While our Imperial Majesty Nightmare Moon is the official head of state of Chiraptera, the rather unfortunate circumstances of her banishment from this plane of, exist plane of existence have made it quite difficult for her to assume her role. As such, the Imperial Legionary Council, which consists of Lord Commanders of the original six Imperial Legions that fled to Zebraca after Nightmare Moon's original banishment, run the day-to-day -day affairs of her country. The Legionary Council, in turn, is headed by the Imperial War Master, who is usually elevated to the position by popular vote among the fellow commanders. The Imperial War Master acts as a commander-in-chief, and de facto head of the state of Chiraptera. Uh, <clears throat> for as long as their fellow commanders allow them to do so, or until they express their wish to step down from, poly from the position. Appoint Emerald Light. I don't want to lose any PP yet. Eternal Eclipse. Not bad. Appoint Lunar Hail. Uh, I don't want to lose any organization either. Lightning Charm. Stone Palisade. Okay. Interesting. Um, but we have the Native Affairs Commission. A rather antediluvian organization, the Native Affairs Commission is tasked with the procurement and handling of native-born Zebrakin laborers. These poor sods, who have not accepted a nightmare moon as their one true god and savior, are usually forced to perform various forms of physical and menial labor for the state, until they either approve, them their, approve their devotion to her imperial majesty or drop dead. We currently have 30,000 laborers. Test subject procurement. Ooh. Ooh, more test subjects. Light, industrial, light industry construction initiative. More. And a city. Heavy industry, naval industry, infrastructure investment. Ooh, that's not bad. Labor acquisition operation. Hmm, I think over here might be best. Go and see what that's like. And let's see, because we have how much do we get today? One point one four, which is not bad. We have River Rose. Does support for unaligned, huh? I kind of like the supremacist thing here. Zamara, more political power, more supremacy support. Not bad. And Comet Flash. Maybe more supremacy support. So you can't change out of those, which I wish we could get more political power, but whatever. Legionaries of the Night. Soldiers of the Night. Huh. More population. Specifically, 54 plus, plus 54, Special Forces Minimum Capacity. 80% Multiplier. Ah, interesting. Even worse. We will not have a lot of manpower at all, will we? That is what it is. Of course, the sacrifice is on the road to success. Autumn Breeze smiles as he nipped on the edge. <clears throat> Of a cigar. The tobacco paired well with the champagne he'd taken on his last visit to France. Before sitting to the Legion Council, Breeze was quite proud to be something of an aficionado of the Equestrian Vineyards. While undercover, a few of his more charged reviews made it even into national papers for a great deal of praise, of course. His handlers quickly put a stop to that growing fame. 
It was a danger to the mission after all, just like you. He mused as he let the smoke roll from his nostrils before he turned to face his acquaintance for the night. The question agent was bound to a chair, bloodied and broken a dozen times over through their previous festivities. Whatever nonsense he tried to gargle past his broken teeth came out as incomprehensible slurs. Save your strength, I'm just enjoying my, a break myself, Autumn chuckled out as he took a small sip from his wine. I do want to congratulate you, my friend. In nearly 30 years of operations I've been involved with, I've never seen someone pony come so very close to actually providing or proving we exist. The agent choked out another gargle of bile and thrashed again his, again his restraints, glaring past the one eye he had left. I'll take that as your modest appreciation for my kind words, but in any case, Autumn added as he finished off his glass, if we're going to have to disappear, we're going to have to have a bit more fun first, just you and me. The Thestral slowly sauntered towards the record player, choosing a more modern Octavian piece as he took the burning ember of the cigar with his hooves. As mayor on the recording, Strom were chilled alive, Breeze recounted how much he enjoyed his work as he resumed his interrogation. The agent gave him what he wanted eventually. We soon shall be vindicated by history, and intensified labor acquisition. The further efforts for the cause. We some extra bodies to throw at our war machine. Our advisors have compiled a list of able-bodied citizens. They will surely enjoy another opportunity to serve Nightmare Moon. Um, uh, lose 25,000, we're not even making a division, my bad. Uh, the Imperial Legions, I think are going to be pretty good divisions to use, so we'll definitely need a couple of those guys, but let's use up all the manpower we currently have right now. There you go, just in case. And, uh, Legionary Medical Research Department. <clears throat> It's a task force of scientists, researchers, and engineers investigating medical and biological breakthroughs for the greater good of Chiraptera. The LMRD has no limits on how far off and base of its researchers might be, but their most gruesome experiments have yielded highly applicable results for the armed forces. Due to the ethically questionable operating procedure, not many in the LMRD remain for more than a decade after requesting transfers or resigning at the end of their first term of service. Those that stay on have often been speculated to be highly functioning sociopaths, but that's not stopped Lady Commander Emerald Light from supporting them without complaint. 10,000 test subjects. Octopus. Noctul, Waxaka, House Cat. Oh, working conditions. Well, let's go with Cat. It's a lot of test subjects. Quite a few laborers. Some more of those guys, too. And we'll see what happens. I don't feel like choosing anyone there, so we'll do that. <clears throat> Increased work quotas. I don't want to lose any more political power. Ooh. Medicine, chocolate, and other such riffraff. The Emperor's dead. Supply consumption goes down, which is pretty good. Experience soldiers' losses goes down, which is pretty good too. But infantry equipment goes down cost. With the artillery, I was hoping we get more artillery. The new lunar empire will receive the falling national spirit. Oh, they'll get this. Um, honestly, that's not bad. Infantry equipment's not bad, but it's pretty cheap to make already. Probably the new lunar empire is honestly what we want. The Manhattan pipeline. Oh, we will cause the Manhattan pipeline explosion. I didn't realize that. Legionaries lead the way. On planet's formation, every unit leader new lunar empire will receive. Oh, that's not bad too. We could probably drill the legions as well, though. <clears throat> it's come to our attention that our legionnaires aren't as disciplined as we like them to be. We'll hold a grand military exercise to remind them of their purpose. This should also show our population that supporting Imperial Majesty is cause worth enlisting, enlisting for. Report 3122. Or 311. 3112. Initiate labor acquisition. Ooh. <clears throat> Eternal clips. Frowned as he used an old abacus to crunch the numbers on the relocation of uh, laborer subclass A951 to laborer subclass A956. The stallion did not struggle with the math. Numbers were a strong suit. His old abacus just did not go high enough to account for the influx of new laborers enlightened in the last raid. Eternal was also not willing to use a new slide ruler his grandson Lucent got him for his birthday. <clears throat> Allocating his laborers to their new professions based on their old ones was hardly a trifling task either, but his equipment was slowing him down. It was rather ironic considering the stallion's age. His mind was sharp as ever, but his body had slowed to a crawl. The equipment he used to secure his spot in Legion's council had worn thin. Even armed with a new tool, Eclipse wondered if it would even be enough. He never denied his feebleness now. The matters of the military were best left to younger soldiers like Lucent, after all. <clears throat> he was letting his frustration get to the best of him. He tried to learn the slide ruler once Lucent came to visit for their afternoon tea. Eternal consoled himself that he was so useful as he reassigned 2,933 new laborers to their assignments across the munitions plans. The children would be turned over for the, to the academies for training. He hoped that Lucent would bring them in tea. It always seemed to calm his nerves. The joys, of course, the bureaucracy. Drill allegiance, auxiliary recruitment drive. Sure, why not? With the increased acquisition of laborers, one general has proposed that you have an auxiliary branch of recruits composed entirely of these same individuals. Though some doubt their loyalty, we'll give them an opportunity to <clears throat> prove their worth. Can we raid for your booty? I want your bodies. Walnuts owns. Oh, they did throw more divisions though now. 
We are dropping them pretty hard though, and that's why we wanted to use a Pegasus division for this too. Oh, do you have? Oh, let's put Delegator. Yeah, be offensive. Successful operation. Ooh. Great news, Warmaster. Our soldiers have returned from the frontier with more laborers to assist her Majesty's mission. I'm sure the Native Affairs Commission will be pleased. Affirmative. 10,000 more laborers. Awesome. It's what we love to see. I love raiding. Uh, you're only three resources like normal. But that's okay. <clears throat> 35,000, is that all? Got done with the ships very quickly. Alright, so what do we have here? Converted dreadnought hull. Escort unguarded cruiser hulls. That's a capital ship, so. Star Chaser. Um, and honestly, we're probably not going to use the Navy very much. I wouldn't even want to use that. So let's just make some light cruisers for now. We'll make enough so that we'll have them all game, hopefully, and they won't all, hopefully all die. We have not much here, do we? God dang it. Um, so did that one get an anti-sub thing. Are you flipping kidding me, son? A soldier's life. Listen up. Uh, and Charm barked out as she trotted out before the Firstborn Legion. The feeling of over a thousand eyes bore in on her as uh, she flipped a stallion rifle around her hooves. In light of some confusion among the rank of five, I've been asked by the council to resolve these matters. I've elected to do so personally so that each legionnaire understands this new weapon system. Lightning Charm hissed out of the soldiers. This is a stallion Svetta rifle. It's a semi automatic rifle and fires a 7.62mm cartridge accurately up to 500 meters. Let me be clear this weapon designed by a bunch of deranged, guileless heathens at Celestia that leaves Equestria. They're exiles too and enemies of Equestria, but they have developed a weapon that surpasses our own. The commander exclaimed as she swung the weapon around, ensuring every opponent got a good look at it. We're behind the curve, legionnaires, and I'm tired of hearing complaints from your commanders about being a, there being a reluctance among the ranks to adapt to the new weapons. Our breach lords are not top of the line anymore, just like your father's muskets and just like your father's so grandfather's swords. This rifle, lightning barked out as she held the Svet Sveta above her head. We will purpose and learn, and we will make it our own in time. But if I get any more reports about a legion dragging their heels and adapting to these new arms, I'm going to use them for your target practice. Hold your officers accountable, hold yourselves accountable, and get it done, she barked out as she slammed the butt of the rifle onto the stage. Dismissed. Thank you, commander. There you go. Yeah. Mm, you know what? We've only that many. This is that one next. Cool. We won't lose anybody here, which is fine. Um, what's next? Terror bombing tactics. Of course, we'll receive this. Supply consumption goes out. That's pretty bad. Tactical superiority. Oh, but we get that. As much as I want to terror bomb people, a tactical superiority is probably just better. It's for us, so it's, I mean, we want to make sure we do well. A millennium of preparing for battle has given us an edge in tactical knowledge. We will establish a mandate that all of our new recruits, as well as seasoned veterans, will be given extensive training in the latest strategies. We don't know what it means to be a, a cheer up Terran, a legionary. Yeah, we definitely need that organization max planning, especially once we go to war, because we got to be very particular when we invade. So, Emerald Lights, Progress Support, Pro Project House Cat 1. <clears throat> Legion of Councils asked the LMRD to ascertain if any of the various magical creatures found in the world would be put to military use. Over the last few weeks, several different teams of researchers have conducted a survey of possible animals, monsters, or other spirit, ghosts, etc. that would be viable. And over the several weeks, I've had to fill out various reports explaining the death and dismemberment or maiming of those most of those teams. <clears throat> the Council's request has been quite costly. The most natural predators we have found are either too dangerous, too weak, or too smart to be considered. Timberwolves proved too difficult to extract from the Everpree Forest, and the team sent to try capturing an Ursa Major never return. Cockatrice has already proved their difficulty with the humiliation of New Maryland's military and were not considered, while the teams sent for the Bugbear and the Chimera were decimated when the creatures escaped their cages and cargo ships. The only researchers with any success was the team sent to collect a Hydra. A predator of dragons themselves, a Hydra is a fearsome enemy, is also quite dumb according to the team. I hope this means it's easier to train. Now I just have to find more of them. And the embrace of the moon. <clears throat> Another garrison division? Nope. Boy, they always love the Lunar Festival. It was a time when the auxiliary divisions and the legionnaire forces engaged in war games against each other to settle rivalries and extra rations to celebrate. Most of the town, legionnaire units trounced the auxiliaries, but Gwedi led his engineers to three consecutive victories this year. Not only that, there was any real bad blood between the auxiliaries and the legions. All that, all that had been thawed out centuries ago. <clears throat> 
Major Mach had the better equipment and the most dangerous missions, but there was no denying that the auxiliaries had the most faith, and if Gwendy knew anything is that it was faith that got folks through the hard times. Her uh, Gwendy's mother had been a laborer, but when she converted and gave birth to him, Gwendy himself became quite qual qualified for the auxiliary. When he was old enough, he sprung at the opportunity without hesitation. Better rations for his mother and a chance to secure his children's citizenship under the benevolent knight? What more could a zebra ask for? The best part of the Lunar Festival was the sermons. Gwendy never found himself proper in the temples for the goddess, but the sermons during the festival were always around a dozen casks of the richest liquor they could find. <clears throat> When Lunar Hall or Hale stepped up onto the empty cask, Gwendy raised a healthy glass of, with every other soldier of Cherub Terra following suit. The festival priestess spoke with a fire and fear that would make even the most grizzled legionnaire blush. She promised an eternity in the night's embrace for those that died righteously in battle, had divine heaven with enough warm beds and partners for every soul that fell in her service. Gwendy and all the auxiliaries hung on her words in the thin moonlight and haze of the drink. Lunar Hale almost looked like Nightmare Moon herself. What a wonderful speech. I kind of want to do that one, but we only have 500. Um, if you want to wait 30 days for 5,000 more. <clears throat> Aid of efficient. We are embarking. Well. There you go. Not successful raid. Standards. Separated complexes. I always choose this one. And I wanted to choose this one. But it gives me, it gives me better base. I like the base. Armor, moon celebrations, armor. Can we actually go to anything else here? Oh, we can go to partial mobilization. That'd be kind of nice, actually. Um, with this one though, actually that you get twenty percent more. Yeah, five percent more consumer goods, better oil. Let's go here, and then we'll grab some more army XP down here eventually. I think we got it right now though. Infantry, close air support. That's pretty good. We're gonna need a lot of close air support. But yeah, I definitely want to go here first if we can. We want to also improve military conditions too, but. Hey, we'll see. All right, poison southeast. Let's do this one. Infiltrate the cities. Being a very large country, Quest has a lot of industrial power to call upon, should they realize their potential. We'll place some agents in key locations across the country. Then all we need to do is give them the word, and Quest's military might will crumble under their lack of supplies. You know what? I lied. We're gonna do this one immediately, anyways. Infantry. We're definitely gonna need some good infantry here. Armor. I don't want to mine armor. We don't have enough for it right now. We can always change it later too. And steel rain. Actually, steel rain. Lunar hall. Steel rain. Where's steel rain? Do we have steel rain? No? Well, actually, you know what? We might wait then. Screw it. I lied. I lied again. My bad. Sabotage Academies? It's no secret that Equestria holds some of the finest minds in the world. Fortunately for us, we know where they live. We'll just need to make sure the several accidents occur once the war begins, of course. Nice. I kind of want to raid again. I kind of like it. Yeah, we got no fuel, which sucks, whatever. Raid, 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 raid. Uh, I don't want to do it over river. I really don't want to do it over river. How thick are these guys? Oh, they're not thick at all. They might still do okay here, then. Really want to emphasize those Pegasi divisions. Uh, did I even organize this at all? Oh, we got bolt action rifles. We have trains. I don't think we have trains, no. Support equipment, yes. Trucks, no. So we need trucks, we need some trains. Oh, Kothag, nice. So we're on Lenny as well. Artillery, yes. Anti-air might be good. I'm going to say no for now, maybe. We'll see. We already, I already did that stuff too. So. Steel and cement, nice. Go over here and grab some radium for freight and whatnot. And then increase work quotas. It's not enough. We need more guns, equipment, and more of everything. Work the laborers' exhaustion if we have to, and turn their homes into factories if they complain. We must be ready to aid our goddess in the coming war. Just, just being fair with everybody. Must be ready. About a week left for that. Twenty-three days for that. For Octopus, Emerald Light Progress Report, Project Octopus the First. Here we go. Slightly better. Go ahead. And who are you? Stone Palisade? Scavenger? I'm give it, go Scavenger immediately, so it's only 3%, but 3% is still not bad. Ah, oh, successful operations. Beautiful, my friends. I love it. I love raiding. I hate getting raided. I hate getting raided, but I love and friendship. 
Red Opal never found himself to be particularly suited with most mares. A doctorate in physics and phys psychology usually ended with him trying to dissect his mind's de uh, dates' minds more than actually caring about their interests. Those tendencies did not make him popular, but then he met Mystic Bale. She was quickly becoming everything to him. Ponies were hard to understand, prone to fits of emotion and irrational thought. Even his own family was strained to care when he went on tirades about the numbers and mystical elements of crystals being harnessed for power. It was one of those impromptu speeches that Mystic first approached him. For the first time, his grand standing at a bar among his colleagues had a desirable outcome. She was perfect. She let him pick away at her mind. She picked away at his, and her love of physics was only rival by her attachment to him. It was so easy with her, just like with math. Being with her just added up. The only downside was how much the mare traveled, but Bright could not bear to hold that against her. That was her job, after all. Even if it meant a visit to Zebrica every few months to ensure the relief organization she ran in War Zena was going well. Mystic Bell was caring like that, and Opal loved her all the more for it. All for the cause. Let's go with this one. As our laborers toil away, we have suddenly found ourselves with a surplus of food in our storehouses. A general eclipse. I have proposed that when the fighting breaks out, we will send shipments of our extra food to keep, keep the Nightmare's forces well fed. Uh, Project Op Octopus. Moonshine Project. All is in deck. Cool. Mm, good day, one, anyways. Most of the, on the Legionary Council look at the LMRD as if they are mad ponies. The baseless rumors of sociopathy misconstrued understanding the staunch professionals might expect from each member of the MLRD. My methodology does not have to be understood. The lack of understanding has not stopped me from succeeding in creating a well-oiled machine, it has also not stopped me from educating our more empathetic researchers personally. I suppose that brings us to our most recent failures from Project Op Octopus. Several of our researchers had refused to push past animal testing for the last few months. Concerns with health and safety for a lot of test subjects will clog the wheels of progress for an unnecessary amount of time. I had to personally reshuffle the development teams for the delaying of progress. The goal of Project Octopus is to graph the regenerative properties of cephalopods onto a sentient creature. Aside from one former legacy researcher's enthusiasm for tentacles, we've had little success. I hope that the changing teams will, will have a positive effect on progress. It should be noted that I have also requested our agents to retrieve a future crop of test subjects from the Hippogriff lands. I wonder if we can find a biological correlation between the transformative magics. Uh, we'll figure it out eventually. Increased work quotas. So we'll do that one too, and then the main hand pipeline. Legionaries do the way sounds like fun, but. Through a significant amount of effort, we have established control over a small section of Manhattan's industry. When the Nightmare arrives, she will have an ample number of arms manufacturers to answer her call. Yeah, the changing do good war eventually, hopefully. A life of a belaborer. A Kinta Kunta had never paid no mind to his mother's words to not sail too far to the east. The young zebra always found them to be nagging. It was a hag's tale among the fisher folk of other village. They lost the remnants of an army kidnapping any of them they could get their hooves on. With the Storm King gone, there was no reason not to expand to new spots. Kinta wish he had listened to him. The ship had drifted too far while they were trawling for Krill, and he had been below when the raid happened. A dozen Pegasi and Thestrals landed on their ship, or deck, killing the captain and rounding them all up in a matter of minutes. A unicorn was brought down, and a cast of strange spell forced them into a deep sleep. When Kinta woke up, he found himself in a laborer's quarters with the other captives. Some were killed trying to escape in the first week. Another died from wounds after flogging for interrupting a sermon to Nightmare Moon, and the last threw himself from the scaffolding down to the mines. Kinta was. Oh, well, the last one from the ship after the first month. He had been there ever since, working all day and into the night. They did not let him near any boats. The Thestral overlords know that Kinta would try to run just as his companions had. As the Thestral captain who gave him his new name said, You are, you will mine, your children will fish, and their children will be citizens. Such is life. Such is life. I really want that one, but so what do we have over here? Are we predetermined to go down to certain land doctrine? No, we're not, which is good to see. Uh, political loyalty. Defense. And then, one minute to midnight. Rejoice, we've done much in preparation for the Nightmare's return. Now that all is left is a way for the living prison, that is, Princess Luna, to crack under the pressure we've exerted. And then a glorious Nightmare Moon will rise once again. Nice. We need more laborers. I want to raid. I don't want to raid down there, though. Raiding up here is totally fine with me. 
We have a lot of manpower, though, which does suck. Actually, over here, what do we have? The Army Reformer. Focus on military advancements. Speed. Organization is very good. Offense. 10% more offense would be really good, too. Ooh. How much organization do our infantry divisions have already? So you guys are like 53. You guys are like 42. 55. 10% is like 5 more. So it's not even 5. Um. 10% more offense. I might just go with 10% more offense. Ah, I'm gonna jump. Why not? So I'm getting way more army XP. Let's see what after this focus. And the phase two of the cat one too. Always two cities lose your speed and lose political power for a couple days. It's fine. Things happen. Comet flash. Anything unique here? No. Well, it's not bad. But still. Golden Republic. Not night operations. Penalty minus thirty percent. That's pretty good. Air superiority seven percent. Is not bad too. I'm gonna go with Star Chaser just because that seems pretty unique. We'll see. Well, meant to midnight. All hooves on deck. And now we might just have to wait. Well, let's get through this one first at the very least. Nice. Uh oh. Can we not do it? Oh boy. Might have to use consequence for this one. A fair most foul. I don't breathe setting his office looking over the papers. It didn't fit. The question was a false state ruled by a super monarch, but here it was, surviving yet again. Moonshine had failed. The solar harlot placated the Thestral population by granting them equal rights when it, and when all it is is a new form of slavery. Separating the Thestrals from the rightful Empress and that weak form known as Luna, she helped with it. She not only keeps the Nightmare Moon in chains, refusing to let her out to lead the people to glory once again. How dare she, how dare her question, how dare they deny the Empress her place? Autumn took a deep breath. This, this was the only setback, surely. The legions, after all, are the eternal uh, servants of the night. Simple setbacks do not phase them. He would simply need to keep working, strengthening his network, readying it for the next time a rising co could occur, and the Empress could be unchained once again. It didn't matter if it would happen in his lifetime, for the night is eternal. It will always remain. As long as the night remains, it will be sharp terror. As long as the nation stands, this legion stand. With the legions, there's a chance. Time was irrelevant. He thought to himself that time of the thrusters would come eventually, and as he walked to the window overlooking new Ayakachali, Ch he muttered to himself, even if it takes a thousand years more, it may come... Maybe time to rethink our tactics. Oh, bitter taste of defeat. Increase, remove increased work quotas, which is not bad. Remove tactical superiority. Crap. What well, sucks? Yeah, another failure. Despite our best efforts, uh, Operation Moonshine has failed. It is a second rebellion of our bloodlines have lost, and it will take the powers of nightmare itself to convince our nation that we should prepare for a third attempt. Let's look to our current state of affairs and determine what needs to be changed so we can last another thousand years. Turn back the clock. Second great conquest. So we have the old guard. The war at sea. The only one went wrong. Strategy in depth. The Batten plan, huh? A failure on the home front. This is that one. We failed in our efforts, but we cannot hold only, only the legionnaires responsible. Our home front was just as critical to Moonshine as their soldiers were. We must prepare for an extra state and build an economy that's able to support it, even if it takes another thousand years to prepare. What can I click on this? New religion, new mayor, yeah. What if I use cons commands? Decision dot no checks. It's still glitched. Okay then. Um, you know what? We'll do this focus and let me read another one and maybe I'll try to re reload it. Maybe uh, and tighten the grip. I like tightening grips. Cause oh, increase the amount of labor is gained through acquisition. Increase the amount of test subjects gained through test subject procurement. Supremacy. Versus this stuff. Mandatory moon day attendance. Convert a fourth of the laborers using any Native Affairs Commission into manpower. Ooh, that's not bad, too. Loyalty should be its own reward. Remove any negative modifiers from every decision in the Native Affairs Commission decision category, but increase the time needed to complete by 15 days. Decrease the amount of laborers needed for Native Affairs Commission stuff. Ooh, decrease the cost by five. You know, I think it seems like I'm going to play this probably twice. 
Um, what else do we have around here real quick? Unlock the opium production category. More opium. Oh, research, that would be nice. Growth. More political power. Inter-district medical network. It's not bad. Sway the old guard. Hidden and closed economy. Bitter taste of defeat. There's a lot of stuff here. I like this. I like this a lot. Thousand year struggle. Ooh, more manpower, of course. Development fund and team, whatnot. Youth service corps. Oh, another research slot. Oh, hippogriffia. Push back the hip push the hippogriffs back into the sea. Interesting. Decor different places as well. Resistance growth speed goes down. Ooh, has to be after a thousand nine. Interesting. I like this. Another stuff over here for just equipment and whatnot. Just a lot of bonuses. Nothing too major. Air field consumption goes down, which is pretty nice. Wait, you get to cast one. That takes so long to get down there, though. So I'm going to go over here and do this. I kind of want to go supremacy and tighten the grip and see what happens with that. But we'll do the underground economy first. Let's not pretend that there is an economy in the world that runs beneath the shadows of every state. As children of the darkness, we will thrive in it. Our agents shall expand our connections into these illegal markets and shell corporations to greatly increase your assets. Emerald Lights Progress Report, Project House Cat Number 2. The lack of intelligence from Hydra seems to be a species-wide trait. The distinctive nature of having several heads attached to one body, of course, um, creates a series of biological diminishing returns. Um, in a lay pony's terms, the more heads there are on Hydra, the easier it is, of course, to control. This revelation has come as we begin our first steps into that project, uh, House Cats Breeding Program. It's been a costly endeavor in regards to life and coin to retrieve a viable population. The first report detailing the cost nearly gave Baron Breeze a stroke. I can see, however, the look on his face had been more than worth the overall price. With a sustainable breeding population, we can begin to experiment with the most uh, receptive subjects on the methods of control. Initial tests with different collars were less than fruitful. The multiple bindings made the creature docile, but rendered it too calm. When each head of the Hydra is bent to our will, it loses its savage nature. There's a suspicion among some of the researchers of a dominant head, similar to how pack animals behave. If the Alpha is brought under the control, our control, the rest of it will fall in line. The theory as of now is that the leader is subdued. The Hydra will fall, still follow commands and still obtain some great aggressiveness. We need them savage, not tamed, in ec economic retrospective. When we first arrived in Chirp over a millennia ago, we were the most foremost technologically advanced forces on the continent. We did not need to interact with the other nations around us. It was wiser and easier to cut ourselves off from the outside trade to remain hidden. We thought ourselves so wise in this hidden economy that could sustain itself without the taint of heretical thought or an infiltrator. We would never only need to interact with anyone else when we were securing laborers. Countries upon centuries of disappearances compounded fewer and fewer souls are willing to come near to us to investigate, further securing our isolation. The system worked when battles were won with blood and iron, when feudal lords and their false gods ruled. It does not work in a world of global trade, though, in a world of rapid technological advancement and shared thought. We see the writing of the walls, radius cars, and even the fringe rumors of crystal fusion. In a world that is constantly more connected by advancement technology, we cannot remain hidden forever. We must make radical changes to our economy, the status quo can no longer sustain a great purpose. For the sake of our nightmare, or of nightmare, we must adapt to, our, to survive. As our ancestors did, so shall we. Yes, something must change. Tighten the grip, of course, will be next. Um, the retreatment of our neighbor laborers has been too relaxed. The restraints on commission allowed for sound protests and protections among the few dissidents there were. Stand our hold over this critical part of our economy and it must not allow even one soul to think of anything beyond service. Um, also, I was able to use, not even use consequence. I just had to reload the game and then we could raid up here. So, it is what it is. Mass adoption. Cool. Uh, we're not quite there yet. And let's go with construction speed because right now we're also getting Pekasaya Division because I want to make sure our Pekasaya Divisions are very, very, very bueno. I just hope we can raid more. I want to raid as much as we possibly can. I know we've been doing this a whole bunch, but... And we need more laborers. We need a lot of things. I need a lot of things. There you go. Buffalo Chieftain. Changing lands. Dear Republic. New hives, huh? Cerola. Nice. New one down here. Giacomo Gateotti. Alright. Well, according to military government, huh? Gabriel de Artiglio. Ah. They're busy all killing each other over there. Don't even get one today. God dang it. League of Four Emirs. Arabian Republic, huh? Yes. Because I do want to get down here pretty quickly, too. Poppies of love. Military factions would be nice. Two civvies. Even one of the following. And improve inter-district infrastructure. So we need that one. So some civvies. A shield company of procurements. Our contacts in the gray markets have solidified different next sectors of control. Sanctioning a new a few small squads of infiltrators. So we shall secure the last few signatures. We need to gain full control of several different companies. Uh, through these, our reach will be greater and even more hidden. Yes. Oh, look at this. 
Labor Importation Initiative. We get 10,000. Ooh. More than one cities available. We well, need political power for that, which actually is not that bad. Yeah, Zebrak has a very large continent. Karkadanistan. What is this stuff down here? It's a gun. I love guns. There are no palm trees at the South Pole. Huh. Kind of doubt the ice dragons have a unique focus tree, but no. So they're supremacists. Just like me. Oh. If I can raid them here to get a little more army XP too. I'm okay with that. Beating up their manpower? Oh, yes, please. Not a lot of manpower. Not a lot of divisions. That's okay. Tighten the grip. Now I'm going to race for that research slot. Having a fourth research slot to spend for another year would be great. Even though I do want this one too. Harsh it fair. Yeah. I think, you know, after this one, as much as I want to do that one, we're going to go with these two. Political take? Nice. Um, well, through labor acquisitions. So we have to wait for that one. So we might as well do this one first. So we can do it every 15 days faster. Yet harsh yet fair. We'll look to reform our justice system. But in doing so, our laws will be harsher. All the same, they'll be much more fair. No more of the... Uh, no ponies above the laws of the nightmare. No one sending creature will be standing above others. Justice is blind, but nightmare is not. Calibrated acquisition operations. Our reading parties will be equipped with the most modern equipment and soldiers. We cannot afford to limit ourselves in these missions anymore by diverting more resources. To each raid, we should be able to enjoy greater returns than these labors acquired. Improve inter-district infrastructure. It's time we examine the state of our uh, roads between districts, meaning that we must take drastic steps to improve infrastructure throughout our country. By building onto existing railroads and roads, we can create a comprehensive inter-district travel network that enables the mobility of our citizens, but also critical logistics and academic modernization. The universities of Yale are of the School of Magic and Equestria will have nothing on our academies. Once we finish modernizing them, of course. It's no secret that our isolation forces us to be creative, but it also hobbles our ability to stay ahead of the curve academically. By granting more funding to our institutions of higher learning, we can benefit from their knowledge. The Exiles. The first ships from Equestria arrived today. Their holes packed with all that could be salvaged from our operations on Equus. Millennia of planning and preparation for wasted with Operation Moonshine's failure, escaping under the watchful eye of the heretical goddess of Celestia. Thousands of our operatives and their assets fled from the shorts of Equestria in the dead of night. Guided by the stars and the moon, just as our ancestors once did, they rendezvoused with larger transport ships off the coast. Experienced soldiers, engineers, scientists, and whatever family they could fit sequestered themselves into these cramped holes. Nearly all of our arm caches and assets poured into Operation Moonshine had to be abandoned to fit these exiles. This is a price well paid, however. Since Moonshine and failed, we do not need more guns. What we need are loyal ponies, the truly faithful, those who, despite never having been born in, in Cheruptera, or Cheruptera, unknowingly carried the patriotic spirit of our ancestors with them in a repressive and hostile land. Rejoice at the return and let us welcome them to our homeland with open hooves. Let us, let us tell them the promise of our predecessors and let them know the truth. We will return. Even if it takes another thousand years, we will return. Which gives them more manpower. As we are assaulting uh, the garrison over here too, because why not? I love assaulting people. But right now we're doing this one too. But I had to do this one first. Question academic extraction. Several question academics are researching different projects that interest us. By staging several honeypot operations and the occasional disappearance, we can siphon out the best and brightest of our heretical enemies with them being none the wiser. Of course, I heard this one a little bit earlier, so if you read this again, please go ahead. But what else are we going to do? Um, I definitely want to do this stuff, but I want more laborers. I want to raid more. I just want to raid. Like, like I want to be a raid extremist. I like raiding when it benefits us like this. Um, yeah, successful raid, I know. But still, hey, look, I like Cruiser. So we do that. The Colossus seems like f a fun thing to do. They need more, uh, military. Oh, we only have 27 factories, Jesus Christ. That's really bad. We definitely need planes, so I'm going to put you actually at the bottom. And then just, like, do that. There you go. Cool. At least start working on getting everything there. Um... We'll gain how many? 5,000 test subjects? That's not bad. Additional labor procurement. 20,000 laborers. That's not bad, but, you know, I really want this one, so. And there we go. Production. We get more test subjects. Would be pretty nice. Move any negative modifiers from every decision in the Native Affairs, but increase cost by 2,500 laborers. Well, I suppose why not. The LMRD is an invaluable asset to cheer up Terra, and we cannot throw out the need for their test subjects anymore. We'll finally grant them free reign to take whatever labors they require for experiments without the need for approval from the Native Affairs Commission. Behavioral Correction Collars. Uh, they have a simple but deadly design. A small explosive charges in case of 5 pounds of durable steel, a microphone and radio wave receiver, and transmitter allow for the location labors to be monitored along with the conversations need be. The collars can be detonated remotely. Nice. Food rationing. 
standardization. One of our founders a thousand years ago wrote a simple directive as we establish ourselves, if one works, one eats. Which will apply a straightforward directive to our laborers who will only be given the rations after they perform their allotted duties for the day. Those who do not work, do not eat. Special access zones? Uh, I want to wait for that one. We don't really need to do that one yet, so let's wait. Ooh. Labor importation. Two sissivies. We can use more laborers, why not? Over here we can... Oh, well. Mm, mm. We'll go with this guy first. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Poppies of love. Off-map factories are pretty nice. Interdistrict medical network, that's that's pretty darn strong to get. Multi-population, stability. Yeah. But let's go here and uh, let's do this one first. Ooh, anything else? No. Okay. Well, poppies of love. Praise be to not mere moon and the bounties of her harvest. Um, cheer up, Terra is a harsh environment even by Zebrakin standards. This however does not stop the cultivation of our crops, including that of the poppy plant. We can extract valuable medicine from the poppy plant, such as morphine, but we also must acknowledge its volatile recreational purposes. We drown their markets. While our own opponents will benefit from the sale and cultivation of the poppy plant, we shall drown our enemies in cheap, dangerous opioids. Our goal is not profit, but proliferation. We shall sink the claws of addiction and strife, deepen our enemies most vulnerable, and spread like a disease from them. An interdistrict medical network. By expanding state control of hospitals and other medical facilities, we can ensure they are staffed by properly trained doctors with the most modern equipment possible. Any citizen labor in the need of medical attention will receive it in new state of the art facilities. The health of our ponies is the health of our nation. Behavioral correctness. Kinto was so close to when the Pegasus Legionnaire descended on him. The zebra tried his hardest to fight back, but a malnourished worker barely bruised his oppressor. When Kinto Kunto was scraped out the ground by the overseers, he cries he managed to see the ocean through the swelling in his eyes. He'd almost reached the boats, almost made it out of this pit, he was so close. They secured him in holding cells outside of the laborers living spaces. The Beatings they gave continued into the morning, not letting him escape even into the dreams of better days. But the town that dragged him from his cells, left eyes swollen shut, and could not hear from one ear anymore. A Pegasus officer, a pompous looking mayor, was given to a speech to a crowd of laborers that was assembled outside. Quinta recognized some of the laborers. The officer gestured to him to stand, and Quinta weakly rose to his hooves. An overseer roughly snapped the metal collar around his neck. The collar cut into his neck as Quinta swallowed and looked around slowly. A silence settled over the crowd, and Quinta realized the officer had ended their speech. Looking at the zebra with an amused expression, Laborer 24601, you tried to escape last night. You tried to escape the merciful embrace of the nightmare. You have not earned your freedom yet, but you get to choose someone who can walk out of the gate and be free. Quinta opened his mouth to speak before the collar choked out the words before he could sound them out. He looked... His look of surprise must have been clear as the officer nodded the head again. You get to choose one, choose carefully, and choose wisely. The zebra took a long, pain breath. He scanned the crowd for the youngest soul he could find, someone who had a full life to live ahead of them. A mare stood out among all others. She was a little earth pony, uh, a lithe uh, earth pony, with a black mane and sad blue eyes. He raised who pointing to her with a nod. Her, let her be free, please. The officer smiled and waved her hoof. A pair of overseers waded through the crowd of laborers and lifted the pony from them. They let the mare step forward at her own careful pace. She smiled at Quinta and the officer as she passed, stepping past the threshold of the open gate. And her collar began to beep, beep, beep. She turned to run back into the gate, but the collar continued to beep, beep, beep. She prided it with her hooves. She pleaded and cried to every god known to them. She fell on her knees and begged the nightmare to forgive for forgiveness. Then the collar exploded. And now she is free, the officer said simply, kicking Quinta off the stage down where the mare used to be. This is your warning. If you ever try to escape, it will go off. Quinta mourned her and would never forget her. Radio advertisement, Reefer Madness. So what first starts with reefers or pot as a filth Phillies, or Phillies call it today, soon turns to harder and harder drugs like opium. It's a gateway to evil, a gateway to corruption. No good son or daughter of Chirap Chira indulges in these illegal narcotics, expecting to be a strong out addict, but nearly all who bogart the blunt end up being scraped out of the gutters. The worst part is in order to get money to buy it all, the loyal laborers and citizens turn to crime. And once the ponies got committing crimes against a glorious nightmare and their fellow citizens, well, that's just about the end of it. Jail time is a disgrace to your faith in your family, and even then, it's not the hardest part. Even our best researchers in the LMRD are stumped on how to get an addict back to a functional level in our society. The best and brightest say it's one of the hardest things to do in science, but one of the problems with the easiest solution, good patriotic sense. Now try Phileas and Colts. The best cure is prevention. Leave narcotics absolutely alone. Remember all the bad things that happen to druggies. Some even say that equestrians are smuggling in dope to undermine our strength. That played right into their hoods, wouldn't it? Why do you not show everyone that cheer up Terrans are not so stupid or so weak to be tricked by those sunnies? If not for yourself or your family, think about how staying above smack and dope proves the value of your country. Let's make tomorrow's headline read like this. Dope, fad, ends. That's what we're trying to mark. And I read this earlier, but we're going to keep recording anyways for now, just because we did a lot of this already. Freedom from service, additional decisions. Oh, that'd be kind of nice. And we're going to try it right here again, because why not? Um, and I want to get at least one more here. Ooh, that cost did go up, which just sucks. Political power cost did go down too, but we need more raiders. We just need to raid more. Because I want to do... Eh. Let's go and do that once, so then we can at least do a phase three of three. Make use of local objective. Uh, a local fauna's weapons against enemies of the state. Emphasis of ferocity and natural killing prowess. 
Oh, yes, please. Just to see what it'd be like. And we should be able to go to war soon. Or at least raid. I do want to go to war soon, too. Like, after this, we're going to just be ready to go to war. That's all stuff. But opium plants. Max factories goes down by one. Yeah, all right. Aw, oh, crap. Oh, of course, it's glitched right now. God dang it. Are you kidding me? Well, let's see what this one says first, and then we'll come back and do it, so... And of course, we we'll do that one, bolster military production, but turn back the clock. Although our efforts uh, fail, we're still a um, um, mi minute from midnight. While the heretical sun might driven us back into the shadows around us, are a great many rich and fertile lands, and it's time for the future of Cherub Terra that we look forward to the world, we we'll look to the world that is immediately around us, Zebraca. Prepare the secondary conquest. As we pivot away from reclaiming question for our goddess, we must lay the seeds of success on Zebraca. We cannot forget why we're taking the steps in this great crusade. For not for greed or gold, but for our goddess alone. The nightmare needs us to secure these lands from the prolificates and heretics, for only we can use its bounty for her righteous Hurricane. Cause. Our naval patrol has reported a massive hurricane descending on our state, likely to cause extreme loss of life. Autumn Breeze ordered a massive contingent of Pegasi and Thestrals to engage with the storm and redirected us away. Most conveniently, the hippogriffs are well within the range we could deflect it. Although the storm was still great in our most provinces, and many heroic soldiers gave their lives trying to control the storm, in the end we were successful. We were confident this would take us power, strike a powerful blow against the hippogriffs. The emergency meeting. The move was foul, and that it was filled with smoke. Hours had passed with nothing to show for. The legionary council had assembled a determined to cheer up Terra's future, still reeling from her defeat. Autumn Breeze reclined in his chair as the meeting entered its seventh hour. Looking over the faces of his fellow counselors, only lightning charm, stone palisade, and eternal eclipse remain. Lunar and Hale had retired to pray for guidance, and Emerald Light had to excuse herself, no doubt, preferring to work one on her many biological horrors. Right then, Stone Palisade excused himself to see the, le to see the legions. Le left only three counselors to determine the path forward. Autumn looked towards Lightning Charm, who was still pouring over reports by the question military from their agents on Equus, or facing up a train ounce of exhaustion. She noticed his, ga his gaze and spoke, rose to speak. A question soldier is still no match for legionnaires, even though given time to mobilize, it might overwhelm us, but with our operations in Equestria over for the foreseeable future, they'll be able to operate more freely in Cherub Terra. A change of strategy might be in order. Turning his head, Autumn looked towards Eternal Eclipse, who did evidently not possess Lightning Charm's endurance. Autumn could feel the old bureaucrat's exhaustion as he rose to give us a report. The Cherub Terran industrial base was simply too small to support our operations in Equestria, and that's not changing any time soon. Autumn's moon darkened. Considering Cherub Terra's population, the shortfall in production could simply not be bridged with the current territories. Then it proposed a solution, Autumn rose from his chair, managing to affect an aura of command even in his tired state. If Cherub Terra alone is not sufficient to restore the Empress to her throne, we should simply have to go beyond our borders. Our legion shall march beyond our borders to conquer new lands for the Empress, and in doing so redeem their failure in the Quiquus. Are there any objections? There were none, and now for the task ahead of us. Um, of course we're doing this one right now. Form the Imperial Frontier Forces. Not bad. Strike down savages? Yes, please. The time has come to t for our strength to be shown to these heretics. Topuk and Zaranti are lands without order and without faith, ruled by petty despots and barely worthy to be considered nations. We shall not underestimate the conniving warlords and their armies, however. We shall treat them as if they were our greatest enemies. We shall pour our hearts and souls into this war. For the Legion, for the Nightmare. I love raiding. I'll say that a whole bunch, but I love raiding. And we're trying to build a lot of opium. Lots and lots of opium, so... Uh, we have three no opium plantations producing one and a half bushels of opium every four months. Every third plantation will generate one additional city, which is kind of nice, actually. So now we have three bushels of opium. Opium produced. Pretty nice. Strike down them goddamn savages. Blood and guts. They stood at attention, awaiting her voice. They stood there, a multitude of minds pondering a multiplicity of possibilities. Victory was a simple concept, but defeats such as they now have been considering profoundly over the past few months was altogether a complicated affair. And either a spiritual affair or a dark night of soul. Yet the legionnaires of Cherub Terra were intimately familiar with dark nights, and through this intimacy they found enough strength to do more than their duty to listen with eager ears at the words of the commander. Lightning Charm alighted the podium, and with a quick, sweeping glance she seemed to stare into the souls of every legionnaire in formation. I know you had a lot to think about the past a little while, but about the state of this nation, the state of the wretched world, she began, yet you look around, no, yes, look, I grant you permission to look. So the legionnaires, each of them, looked and saw one another, dressed in their best uniforms, presenting their best dispositions. Look around, because you'll see the future of this nation. Look around, you'll see the fruits of a thousand years of Cherub Terran history. We are still strong, and we are mighty. Look beyond the horizon, and what do you see? Lightning paws, and the legionnaires look to see where the warm tropical sky touched the roan red earth. What do you see? What I see is potential. How many creatures have yet to know the beauty of the nightmare? How many have yet to receive the blessing of the dark one? How could we, who know that darkness so well, not want to share with the world? Look, my fellow Cherub Terrans, because the lands of the Zebraca belong to the nightmare, and always have. All of them as one began to cheer, a crescendo of jubilation building and building until it finally gushed forth into a rapturous fervor. Letting charm smile, she might have never seen the beautiful nights of Manhattan, so she had resolved to build one here in Zebraca. Hurrah! Enemy of my enemy, huh? 
Woe to the vanquished. Reorganize the frontiers. State capitalism. Sway the old guard. The conquest of new lands does not mean uh, the, not mend the failures of Operation Moonshine. The old families speak of the Legionary Council simply trying to mend their failures with smaller gains. Their imprudence needs to change, Lord Commander. Uh, Autumn Breeze will host a gala this plantation. The Council hopes the Patriarch of Clan Reed can sway his fellow aristocracy back in line. Oh my god, why do I have to always do this? Why is Hoi 4? It's probably not even um, a question of war. It's just Hoi 4 being dumb. That's so stupid. I have to start the game every single time. Um, hearts and Minds. I like that. I like this one, too. Say Capitalism. Huh. Why not? Competition in the capital and breeds uh, weeds out the weak and unsustainable businesses. But sometimes, God knew if it's needed to ensure the country's economy charged for without the meddling of business ponies. Our economy shall sustain itself. We shall not hide it any longer. We may not offer the same stock options. We can certainly guarantee that the state's businesses are too big to fail. Emerald Lights Progress Report Project Housecat 3. Following the completion of a field test of mooring, it's safe to declare Project Housecat a success. Safe, however, is an objective phrase. Although the First Hydro Brigade embedded into a supporting role performed admirably on the LMRD supervised exercise, it was not free of complications. The first issue with the implementation of Project Housecat being the long just gestation cycle of hydrates. While the hydrate itself grows to maturity rather quickly, the process of carrying the eggs to hatch is a long and complicated one. The size of the creatures and their danger do not allow us to mass produce the creatures in our current territory, meaning that there is a reasonable limit to how many hydra we could bring into our forces. The second issue is the logistics of maintaining the hydra. Although we have figured out how to control them by coloring the alpha head, each one still requires nearly three platoons to handle this creature's daily maintenance and combat conditions. The amount of resources that would go into each Hydra Brigade could easily fund several armored divisions. At the end of the day, the LMRD has delivered once more to the Council its monster, even if the Brigade leads it, leading it insists on it being called Mr. Cuddlesworth. The only thing more dangerous than a Hydra is the Legion behind it. That's a Hydra company. Um, radio report, a shameful display. Last night, an emergency military uh, board. Legionnaire Captain Courageous Coral was found guilty in eight counts of drug trafficking and treason. The disgraced officer was found to be collaborating with seditious elements of bring narcotics into a great nation. Due to the heroic efforts of well-informed citizens, Cor Coral was captured by authorities in the act of attempting to sell opium to his own soldiers when to give him an edge in an upcoming training exercise. When reached for a statement, the Lord Commander Alden Breeze did this to save off the captain. Let me make it clear, my friends, Courageous Coral hardly lives up to his name, while upon review of his record, it is a miracle that he even managed to escape it to a prestigious corps of officers. He was mediocre and a philanderer, or la philanderer, a disgrace to the Legion's values before he even sunk the slow. I hold in my hooves his record as irrefutable proof of these claims, and as a text to swear this to you, the council does not abide by this behavior from anyone. From this moment on, courageous quarrel, stripped of the rank and status, may the nightmare have mercy on his soul. The guilty party will be tried as the moon speakers later tonight. The trial sentencing will be broadcast on all stations for all the sharp terror to hear it. The divine justice of this one true goddess shall smite the sinner. Our sources tell us that a just punishment is to be expected, a swift execution, and now some music. No ponies, of course, above the law. Um, as we just raided some more, oh, we can conquer Tobuk. Oh! Tobuk. Yes, please. I'm not expecting a lot from our infantry, but I'm expecting quite a bit from our Pegasi. These guys should be pretty decent. 18 combo is pretty nice. Um, let's see. Uh, we just don't have a lot of... Oh, Hydra... Oh my goodness, what is this? Soft attack, hard attack? Urban attack. River attack goes up quite a bit more. He doesn't give you any more armor, though. I don't even though it looks like he should. Really? Is that really that good? More breakthrough and soft attack? I like that. More HP. Um, oh, quite a bit of piercing, too. Screw it. We're going to throw it on there. I wanted to throw in field hospitals, but whatever. Okay. I'm okay with this. Just because manpower is such an issue for us. Trickle back. We have, like, no trucks. So we'll see, I guess. Feud ends. That's nice. Additionally, let's make sure we got this too. And let's see if they attack us. If not, that's okay. We'll attack them probably. And evening at the Clan Reed Plantation. Autumn Auburn Leaf made her way through the crowd of Chiroptera's most esteemed aristocracy as a gentle rise and fall of classical music filled the halls of Clan Reed's plantation home. She stood by a window, looking out on the faint outline of the tobacco fields in the moonlight. Something was off, for new tone in the incessant chatter of the elderly nobility. 
That's a familiar look, Lady Leaf. Lucent Eclipse spoke through the mingling horde of wealth and power to bother her. Lestalian offered her a glass as he sipped from his own. You scrunch your nose when you're onto something. Mm -hmm. Rather bold of you, General Clips, the mayor mused over the rim of her drink. Operation Moonshine failed. The council need the old blood and lime for another thousand years. Do you notice it? <clears throat> I lack your perception, Auburn. Lucent replied with a shake of his head. The festival was many things, but political savvy was never his forte. He made up it for it with his heart. Having a heart hour was a hard thing to do in Cherub Terra. They were relieved. No riots. No great wave of change. Every pony in this room is comfortable with the moonshine failing because it means the burden is off their shoulders, Auburn explained. They not be might, might not be happy that it failed, but they're all smiling now, though. They're content that they've done their part, yet ensuring the success of the next generation. The next generation, Lucent said, observing the room. Do you notice here anyone or age? The band is about to play a rather nice song, and I'm afraid if I ask any pony else to dance, I'll break their hip. A genuine laugh slipped out of Aub past Auburn's lips. She shook her head in amusement at Lucent as she nurtured her glass a bit more. She set on his words with a scan of the room. There was a crowd of ponies packed into the ballroom hall of the estate. Young laborers walked by with drinks while junior officers stood guard in doorways and on balconies. The aristocracy, gray and wrinkled, danced and had a way. They sent off uh, Operation Moonshine with a fine wine and hushed promises. Each member of the council was celebrating its end. It was sharper than it used to be, Lucent, the mayor finally said as she set the empty glass down. She looked at a hoof to take his. Guiding them towards the music, your subtlety could use some work. They control the waves of change, and you need to be patient. Patience is a virtue that I truly like, he mused as he began the slow waltz gliding across the ballroom. We have reason to introduce for reform now, meaningful change for every pony. Why let them slowly control it? Because it's easier to ride away than to fight against it, Auburn countered. Let their last round be a sweeping reform of our nation. Whatever comes next, we will simply have to make do with whatever they leave us. Now stop stepping on my hooves and let the lady lead. Always let the lady lead. Any more manpower? Oh, that's not bad to do, too. Uh, pursue various economic projects. Ooh, that's not bad, too. Ooh, more, even more political power? Labor leasing? Although laborers belong to the state, sometimes there are simply too many for the state to use it on all projects, because we have an overflow of laborers. It only makes sense that we allow what few foreign companies on our soil and local businesses to lease this fr free labor from us. At a reasonable tax, of course. Hmm. Legionary Council. They're not attacking us, which is fine. We're attacking them there. Could you actually win here? Yeah, we could. We could try it. Um, how are we doing with this stuff? Doing all right? I mean, if we want to send out a fleet, our fleet's not pretty good, yeah. It's fine. Do the best we can. Oh, look at that. Nice. Um, I'm sending half you guys down here. There you go. I guess. Oh, we lost a couple ships, too. Oh, crap, that's not good. Um, yeah. Oh, we can't even port anything. Okay, then. That makes sense. That sucks. Nice. Nice, there you go. Um, honestly, you guys can attack over there if we have to. Attack here to here, maybe, if we can, yeah. Here to there, maybe. And maybe from here to there. Maybe, perhaps, yes, no, maybe so. Not bad so far. We're doing war economy. I want Ocean Breeze still, but whatever. Yeah, I'm just going to wait a little longer for that. Which is fine, whatever. We do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm as well anyway, so. Um, I like that one. Reorganize this stuff. War at sea. Expand local civilian governments. Legionary Council might act as a supreme local authority, but it would be foolish to have them weigh in on local district disputes and have the laws of small towns by expanding the power of our local government and officials. We can encourage greater participation in government while expanding our power simultaneously. Hearts and minds. Operation Moonshine might have failed, but Chirp Chara has not. Our recent battles have given our propaganda machine all the film, features, and pictures that need to drum up its messaging for the first time in centuries. We do not have to look back at our ancestors alone for heroes anymore, for there are living legends among us now. Crowds line up at the recruiting office for blocks after newsreels of show our brave soldiers fighting at the front. So do those two. Do we fun? I like this one too. Yeah. By expanding our allocations to the industrial sector with a larger development fund, we are investing in the future success. Although it may harm us financially now, but pouring money into greater industrial research and companies, we can improve the... Uh, compliance and effectiveness of industry industry at all levels. Great market contacts. We'll wait for that one. Regular organized agricultural sector. Our agricultural sector has been weakened by the strain of war. Each success and each failure consumes valuable pony power and supplies, hemorrhaging our food supplies over time. By mechanizing our farms the same way we have some of our military divisions, we can not only free up more buys for the industrial sector of our front, but also increase our available food food supply. Hello. 
Yeah, if this had fuel, that'd be great, but it does not, which sucks. Go in if you can. Technology to start attacking there, too. Um, there we go. Let's see what you can do. Hey, we landed. Nice job, guys. Oh, you're over down. You're down here. That's, that's harder to see. Are we fighting all? Oh, we're fighting. Oh, both nations are the same. Time. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, we're fighting someone else. Nice. And that should capitulate them. Nice. So then you guys do this too. A little bit of manpower. Um, we might be able to get this, this war over very soon. Okay, 4 to 20. Go to that one. Four more laborers. Opium? No more opium. Okay. A war propaganda? Yeah. That's worth it. I wanted to get the new guy, but whatever. Keep going as best you can, Agazat. Come on. I want that, but I'll keep expanding here too. Zinder, huh? That's good for MXP, I guess. Through 2,000 versus 16, 17,000, that's pretty nice. Come on, y'all. Nice, very good, very good, very good, very good. That's not going to be enough to capitulate him, is it? Oh, my goodness. Ah. You're going heavy industry for now. Um, we also probably want to form the Imperial Frontier Forces. Our legions dominate our enemies on the field of battle, but when a war ends, then what? Uh, with a, when our first ancestors carved out modern-day Chirrup Chirrup from the natives as solid or soil, they formed dedicated units to keep the peace. We should follow us into this history and form our own frontier corps to serve, protect, and ensure the loyalty of our new territories. Project Octopus the Second. Project o Octopus proceeded at a brisk pace now that the LMRD teams in charge of its development have been thoroughly reminded of the moral and spiritual imperative of being at the forefront of scientific breakthroughs by whatever means necessary. The few that have voiced complaints about have been the test subjects. Our last pool of laborers realized the nature of the experiment after several of their numbers were released following the completion of the trials. The resulting suicides were a waste of valuable resources and the driving factor for our new security measures. The unfortunate loss has been beneficial in allowing me to force the Council's hoof in acquiring hippogriff test subjects. Initial trials are promising as we have already identified a ca catalyst in their blood similar to that of octopus that reacts similarly when exposed to crystal extract taken from Project Oaxa. I am hopeful for a breakthrough soon. I am beginning to suspect I can never look at the calamari the same ever again, however. Quite curious. And quite good. Yeah, just go there. Nice. Keep taking everything. Every time matters. Nice. Out of time. And that was my coffee. Keep him in place. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. Awesome. Yeah, we'll do that one too, but I think we'll probably end the episode there after we read War of the Vanquished. The rogue warlords of the desert have been captured by our force, and now that all that matters is to decide what to do with them. While there have been talks of simply executing a lot of them, the Legionary Council has met to decide the fate. The debate is expected to take several takes and requires many interrogations, but the nightmare is just a mistress, so we shall follow her example. Uh, it allows to determine how we deal with the people of Tarantia and Tobuk and the political and military leaders. we on this one first, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll probably continue expanding uh, as Cherub Terra and seeing if we can get any more manpower. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.